But this is, this is good. Why is it good? These are eventually small. These are eventually small. This s is kind of like that scalar multi you know, mul multiplying, right? So there's, there's lots of good things here, OK? Now, th the trick here is to figure out which n works. That's what's, that's what's harder here, OK? So let me suggest a way of doing this. We're going to do this one carefully. And I'm going to do it slightly differently than the book. I, I, I maybe simplify what's, what's in the book. But, um, but I want to I show you sort of um, how, to, how to deal with something a little more complicated. Okay? And if you find this fun, then you're really an analyst at heart. OK, okay so here we go. Give an epsilon proof. Give an epsilon bigger than 0. Well, OK, what, what am I going to do here? This is what's, hmm. Uh, I'm going to try to, of course, there's, there is a triangle inequality here. I'll try to make this part small, this part small, and this part small. And what's not so obvious is, um, is, uh, is how to deal with some of, of these things, right? Because if I have, uh, yeah, so. Um, so for instance, I could try to make tn minus t smaller than epsilon over 3, right? But that's a little bit of a problem because there's an s in front, right? I don't know how big s is. So maybe I should try to make this epsilon over 3s, right? Are you with me? But wait, if I do that, then this becomes epsilon, or if I, and I try to do this like epsilon over 3t, Right? That's okay. That's a little messy too, right? And there's an S and a T, I'm kind of doing different things, and so maybe there's a way to to simplify that. Let's let uh, n, a k, be the bigger of the two. Okay. You'll see why I'm doing this, but it's it's basically to avoid having to do different things for different terms. Okay. Now, it turns out I'm just going to warn you that there are I'm going to leave a little space here because I might want to include more things in this, in this K to make things work out nicely later. Okay? But this is sort of where you play, you fiddle with it until you get everything to work. So here we go. What does this say? This means so that, uh, so th uh, given let K be this, then the point is there exists an N1 and an N2, just like over here. I'm picking two things for different, the different sequences such that n bigger than n1 implies, help, sn minus s is less than epsilon over, yeah, let's make it 3k because I'm trying to make this less than epsilon over 3. Okay. Do you see why if k is bigger than s and t, this thing will be, bi will be, will be bi uh, small enough so that its product is less than epsilon over 3? Because that's as big as s, but k might be bigger. Okay, so this part times s will be less than epsilon over three. That's a good thing. Okay. Similarly, n bigger than n two will imply that t n minus t is less than epsilon over three k. Also, I'm looking ahead to what I need. With me? Okay. So what do you think I'm going to use as my maximum? Or what, it, what do you think I'm going to use as my n? I'm trying to find an n that works. Yeah, I hope that the maximum works, OK? But let's just try, right? This is where you're fiddling for a little while. So let's, um, let's let big N be the maximum of n1 and n2. So if I'm far enough along in the sequences, then that term's small, that term's small. Oh, wait a minute. What about that term? And we haven't dealt with the first term. Well, then this implies, check this out, Sn my, at Tn minus St is less than or equal to. Would you agree when I do the triangle inequality and split up those terms, what I get here from the, from the first term is what? Epsilon what? Squared, maybe? 
over 9k squared? Yeah? Plus, what does that term become? The s times tn minus t? That's s over epsilon over 3k, yes? And epsilon over k is less than 1, so this becomes less than epsilon over 3, and the other one similarly. Uh, I guess it, it could be strict now if you want, that's correct. Okay. Now, um, we have a slight problem here. What do, I, what do I need to be true here in order for this to be less than epsilon? I mean, the problem here is in the k, isn't it? Right? But I could do a few things to help me out. What could I do? There's also an epsilon squared, right? That's a little bit of an issue, too. Hmm. Well, there's many ways to fix this, okay? But let me just suggest one way. Isn't it true that if epsilon is less than 1, then epsilon squared is less than epsilon? Okay. Okay. Um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, okay, that's not exactly what I wanted, actually, just realized. Let's do something else. Uh, how, how about this? Would you agree if epsilon is less than k, I could get rid of epsilon, one of the, eps, the, the, the two squared terms? Because if epsilon is less than k, then epsilon over k is less than 1. And I could, I could make that less than epsilon over 9k, right? So here we go. So I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to do something, modify this to make epsilon less than k. Uh, and then, so. This is because if I make epsilon over k less than 1, then this is strictly less than epsilon over 9k plus epsilon over 3 plus epsilon over 3. But now I can make this less than epsilon over 3 as long as I make k less than what? Less than 1. OK. But now how can I make sure those happen? I can modify my choice of k, right? I, k just had to be bigger than s and t. And now, if I just make it bigger than 1, it makes it that, that inequality true. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's right. If k is, this is what I want, actually. If, I, if k is bigger than 1, this becomes less than epsilon over 9. That, that's the right way. Thanks. <laughs> a little worried there. Thank you. So I'll make this bigger than 1, and I'll make it bigger than epsilon. So here, I've just fixed this by making k bigger than st1 and epsilon. You can't stop me from getting, going far farther in the sequence if I need to. It's basically what I've done to make both these things true. OK? So we're, we've established what we wanted to establish desired. OK, I think I, think, uh, uh, I won't do um, all the other things, uh, the other theorems like this that are in your book. Your book has also talks about quotients or limits of reciprocals. And I encourage you to take a look at that. You have to be a little more careful there, because with the limit of reciprocals, it's not necessarily defined if the uh, denominator is, is 0. So you have to be just a little careful. All right. Any questions about um, what the general the strategy is for showing that sequences converge? Your goal is to find an n. The idea you start with is to, to bound the thing that you want to show converges to to the to uh, the bound the, the the difference between the sequence and its limit. Okay. And you want to do so in terms of things you know are small. Okay. Good. So that's a, a warm up to um, to sequences. Uh, let's talk about subsequences. And I want to show you why it might be interesting to consider subsequences. So first, let's say what a subsequence is. 